Hi and welcome back to this second video tutorial on getting started with the IBM Smart Cloud Enterprise. In this video we're going to show you how to provision Linux instances onto the IBM Smart Cloud. So to start with we're already logged in and we've gone to the control panel and instances pane and from here we're going to hit the add instance button. So once you hit the add instance button you select you're presented with two different options uh, view and data center. So initially we need to make sure that we've selected the correct view. So this effectively filters out all of the assets that I can actually provision onto my Smart Cloud account. So public is the global public catalog. My images are images that I have actually taken snapshots of and stored for future provisioning. And shared images, which is images that may have been uh, allowed, well, I've been allowed access to from other people using other Smart Cloud accounts. So we're going to start off with public, because that's the easiest way to get started, and we're going to select a data center. So these are all the data centers around the world that we can run instances in locally. So we're going to choose our local data center, which is Einigen, Germany. So once we've selected Einigen, Germany, we are then presented with a list of all of the pre-built, pre-customed uh, images options that IBM have built and fully support on the IBM Smart Cloud. So from here we've got some IBM classics like uh, BPM, Cognos, Big Insights, DB2, WebSphere and a whole load of other images. Um, worth mentioning at this point, supported operating systems are Linux with SUSE and Red Hat variants and Windows Server 2008 R2 and Windows Server 2008 R1 along with Server 2003 um, R2 and R1 as well. So, nice little uh, grouping of operating systems we can choose from. So, we can choose one of these pre-built images that we can provision and then have an up and running DB2 server in, in minutes or an Infamix server or any of the other options that we've got here. Or we can scroll to the bottom, which is what we're going to do today, and actually just deploy a completely blank operating system that we can then customize and do whatever we would like us, ourselves. So we're going to select SUSE Linux Server for this. Um, we're going to select an x86 version. And then we're going to hit Next. Okay, so this screen allows us to enter all the variables required when provisioning the server. So if we start from the top, uh, we're allowed to put in our name. So we're just going to call this Test Linux. Um, this name needs to be unique within your smart cloud environment so you can call it anything you want as long as you haven't used them already um, next down is quantity we can't actually vary that from here but we can vary it with other applications which we'll go into more detail within other videos um, a server configuration itself we have copper bronze silver gold and platinum um, as we go up the range of servers or the specific hardware configurations um, we increase number of vcpu amount of memory and the size of local disk. Um, for the purpose of this we're actually just going to use a copper instance but we could just as easily use any other. Um, we can choose to use minimal local disk space so if we're intending to use purely um, just the local disk for the operating system then all our application data is going to sit on a persistent disk which we'll come on to in just a minute we can actually tick that box which means that we only uh, provision the 4 or 6 gig of server install image rather than using the whole 60 gig and having the majority of it sitting there doing nothing um, but for now we're just going to leave that unticked so the next thing is uh, key so when we're actually accessing the Linux instances um, we need to provide a key so that we can uh, maintain security uh, through public-private key authentication. So we don't actually use passwords to log into the servers. Um, we actually use public-private key authentication. So part of this is during the provisioning uh, time, the provisioning software in the back end of the smart cloud will actually dump on a very specific key onto your instance in the cloud you will hold the other, other half of the key and then that's how you effectively actually authenticate to the instance when you connect. So I have a number of uh, keys that I use um, for all different types and purposes of instances 
Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to go through building and, and actually working with a brand new key um, for the very purpose of showing you how you'd actually convert it into a format that you can then use in PuTTY um, to be able to actually authenticate up to the server using PuTTY um, as an SSH client. So the first thing we need to do is hit add key. So we're going to call it the same name as the server that we've just been working with. So we'll call it test Linux. Uh, we then hit generate key. So what this is effectively doing is generating a completely random key for you. Um, and then it gives you the option to download it. At this point, this is the only point at which you'll be able to actually download this key until you've accessed the server itself. So if you don't download it now, you've effectively just orphaned the server on the smart cloud and you'll have to start this whole process over again. So download the key and make sure you remember where you actually download it to. So I'm literally just going to download it to my um, downloads folder. One other thing to mention is when you download the key, it doesn't actually download as test Linux. It downloads as IBM cloud underscore username underscore one because I've downloaded ones in the past underscore RSA so it's always worth remembering that specific um, name and if you can't go in change the name of the server so that you can actually remember what it's called or change the name of the key so you can remember what it's called so X that off that's all downloaded now and close so going further down we come on to networking options so when we're doing networking on the smart cloud we have two different options we can use public virtual networks um, or public networks or we can use private virtual networks so inside of our test and demonstration environment we only have public internet um, networks available so we only have one in the drop down but if you did have more um, so if you'd gone and actually uh, bought separately a private network from IBM as part of your smart cloud uh, bundle you can then provision that as the primary IP address and then select um, system generated so whether it picks one up randomly or statically generated and then you can actually add your reserved IPs um, one at a time onto the actual server so what is this? this gives you the capability to use your predefined um, pre-provisioned IP addresses on your servers and give those servers either 100% public or 100% private access. Um, you can then go in and add secondary NICs and uh, you can do that via actually going onto the server or inside of some of the other applications that will show you on how to provision uh, instances and entire topologies to the smart cloud but for now we're literally just going to use a public internet address and we're going to leave it as system generated so it randomly generates an IP address. Okay, the last thing, uh, the variable that we can actually customize at this screen um, is persistent disk. So persistent disk is something that we'll go on to in more detail in a later video because we actually have to go to a different tab to provision it. But whilst we're here, we can literally um, add an extra um, persistent disk so that should we ever delete the server disk, so when we actually delete the server, should we not want that data to be destroyed we can add a persistent disk so we have one called test storage mount disk we can add a mount point or we can leave it blank add disk and we've now effectively got that storage ready to go so that we can actually use that with this server and if we ever delete the server test storage will maintain consistent and persistent so we can actually remount that up to another server should we want to do that basically so we're going to mount test storage close hit next and we're left with the summary page the summary page is obviously some of the variables we've put in and some of the static um, fields that have sort of been generated such as the image ID which is the serial number of this particular virtual instance price networking storage names things like that hit next one more time agree to the terms and conditions and submit this takes a few seconds just to submit the job to the IBM provisioning workflow once this has occurred we can drop straight back into the control panel and just wait for that instance to uh, 
to actually come active and then we can start logging into it and using it. Okay, so once the instance has gone active, um, which we can tell from the status here, um, we then need to modify the key that we downloaded earlier on um, from MyVM to actually be able to access the instance through PuTTY. So we start by minimizing the Smart Cloud window, um, and then we open up a program called PuttyGen. PuttyGen is freely downloadable from the PuTTY website. Um, it's basically designed to use open uh, and also RSA based keys and convert them into .ppk keys which is the format that can be read by the PuTTY um, SSH client. So we start by just hitting file load key. Um, we then just go and find the key. Now it's worth bearing in mind obviously this is not a PPK key yet so we need to actually look for all files scroll down and find test Linux. Now I've actually renamed this for the purposes of this demonstration from IBM Smart Cloud underscore username dot UK dot RSA <coughs> to test Linux just so that it sort of matches up with the name that we gave the instance so we can get some consistency. Um, hit open. Okay. So we successfully port imported the OpenSSH key into PuTTY, hit OK. Alright, so you don't need to worry too much about any of this. One thing you do need to do is give the key a passphrase. Now what that passphrase will do is it adds an extra layer of authentication um, so that when you log in you not only um, authenticate with the key but you also authenticate with a typed password as well. So I'm just going to give this a quick password. So bear with me for two seconds. OK, and then from here it's a simple case of saving a private key, give it a name, so we'll call it test Linux and save. OK, and now we can exit off of PuttyGen and we may just have noticed that up in the top uh, left hand corner of the screen, test Linux just popped up. So. Now we need to quickly dash back to the Smart Cloud Control Panel. You could have done this earlier on, but it makes little or no difference. And we need to copy either the host name, which is a public DNS, or the IP address. For simplicity, we'll just take the IP address. Control, copy. Minimize that. Open up PuTTY. And from here, we can copy and paste the IP address into the host name or IP address uh, part of the PuTTY terminal and then we need to basically add in the SSH key. So we need to go to connection, SSH, authentication and then browse straight to the desktop for test Linux. Open. Okay, so at this point we're ready to go but there's one more thing that makes it slightly easier. Um, when we're actually logging in we still need to use a username even though we're using all these certificates not certificates, keys, so we can actually just pre sort of uh, get that ready by typing it in here. The username is IDC user. This is standard across all of, uh, of IBM's Linux instances. They all use the same username whether they are blank images or whether they are um, custom built um, DB2, WebSphere, Cognos images. So I think we're ready to go. Last thing we're going to do is just save it. Obviously, we've had to go through a few steps to get to where we are now. So we're just going to save that as test Linux, save, and open. And then what you'll notice is the first thing we have is because we haven't connected to this machine before, we notice that the system basically says, "Are you sure this is the server?" Um, because it's not no, it's not in the known known hosts um, server file, so we say, "Yep, that's the server we want to connect to." So we've using IDC user, we've authenticated with our uh, private key. It's now a case of just adding in our password or passphrase, and we're in. And this is our Linux. We start in our home directory, 
And from here we can um, use password less sudo to do 90% of our commands. Should you need to run into um, root, you can just su to root um, and, and basically play around and then sort of uh, get on with doing whatever you in, intended to do on the smart cloud. So that is provisioning uh, an instance of Linux on the IBM Smart Cloud. Um, next video we're going to do is around provisioning a Windows server on the IBM Smart Cloud. So uh, tune back in to see that one uh, next. Thanks. Bye.